The latest James Bond movie, No Time to Die, is Bond's 25th adventure that's captured on film. Commander James Bond, companion on the Order of St. Michael and St. George, Royal Naval Volunteer Reserve, is an agent of the British MI6 Secret Intelligence Service and goes by the code number that we all know, 007. Since the movie GoldenEye from 1995, Bond has been wearing Omega Seamasters. And it was Oscar-winning costume designer Lindy Hemming who was responsible for casting 007's watch in GoldenEye. She said that she was convinced that a Commander Bond, a naval man, a diver and a discreet gentleman of the world would wear the Seamaster with a blue dial. Now all four movies featuring Pierce Brosnan as Bond. The watch on the wrist was always that Omega Seamaster professional with its very recognizable steel bracelet and wavy blue dial. This immediately became THE James Bond watch in the eyes of many. And of course, Bond has been wearing different watches, both in movies as well as in Ian Fleming's novels. But that blue dial Seamaster that really has become that recognizable Bond watch. As of 2006, Daniel Craig's first outing as James Bond adds a more edgy side to Bond, perfectly befitting the changing times. This is also reflected in the watches that Bond now wears, which include the Seamaster Planet Ocean, the Seamaster Aquaterra and the Seamaster 300. Although there are several different watches on James's wrist, the three things that connect these are the brand, Omega, the collection, the Seamaster collection, and of course the fact that they have all been delivered by MI6's Q branch. Hello Q, I've missed you. Your watch. The collaboration for GoldenEye started uh, in a very interesting way. In fact, it wasn't us, it wasn't Omega that approached AM Productions or the company. It was in fact uh, started by the costume designer, by Miss Lindy Hemming. Because the character as portrayed by Pierce Brosnan is completely different in his behavior, in everything he does and everything he possibly even thinks, than his predecessors. Because of these changes and because of this complete reboot of the character, Lindy Hemming felt, not only costumes-wise, but let's say production design-wise, that this character would be in dire need of something completely different than everything you saw on James Bond before Pierce Brosnan. And one of the things she thought about was the watch, and she literally uh, went on record having said that she didn't believe that he would be wearing as a character the watch that everybody else thinks he would be wearing. She also proposed the color blue, and she also proposed the brand. And this is how then we were approached. After being approached, and after also the idea of the blue color was communicated to us, there was no other choice than the Seamaster 300M Professional Diver. Seamaster is offering the wearer the best of both worlds. In fact, it's a professional watch for professionals, but at the same time, it can fit under the cuff, under the sleeve of a tuxedo, of a smoking, for example. So it literally offers you a professional watch that a well-dressed commander or a well-dressed gentleman or lady could also wear, you know, on a night out, which means that it fits exactly the Bond character. It fits it more than any other watch before because literally the Seamaster 300M, the professional diver, it's thin, it's beautiful to look at. It has this wavy blue pattern on the dial, but at the same time, it gives you the ruggedness and the sturdiness that the Seamaster family actually started in 1948 with. The Bond watch has always been kind of a character whenever it appears in the film. It has technical, spycraft technology built into it in a lot of the films, making it a, a kind of character in and of itself. But also, aside from the practical technology requirements of it, Bond is a very precise, and I call him an essential decision maker. He, his aesthetic is incredibly instinctual. It never feels like he hems and haws and fusses over any of his decisions and really anything, his actions, and certainly not in his aesthetic decisions. He always just feels like he has the right instinctual answer. And so an Omega watch is a kind of perfect amalgamation of all those things because you would never question that it's not elegant or perfect or technically suffices whatever the issue is for him in, the, in, a, in a particular mission. Yeah, it's kind of a perfect marriage, I think. The Bond watch that's imprinted in my mind is the Omega Seamaster from the mid-1990s. It has that highly recognizable steel bracelet and the wavy blue dial. 
In the 1995 movie GoldenEye, Pierce Brosnan had the brand new Omega Seamaster Professional 300m on the rift. Reference 2541.80 was the first of a new collection of professional dive watches launched in 1993 and it was introduced with a quartz movement. A similar watch with an automatic movement was introduced in the following year. The new Seamaster Professional featured a blue dial with a wave pattern and a five-link bracelet with alternating polished and brushed parts. The Seamaster on James Bond's wrist was of course equipped by Q-Branch with some life-saving features. Hidden in the bezel was a laser that James used to cut the floor in his Soviet train in order to escape. And later he used the built-in remote detonator to set off a bomb. In the 1997 Bond movie Tomorrow Never Dies, James now wears an automatic version of the Omega Seamaster Professional 300 meters. This is reference 2531.80. Inside the watch now ticks automatic caliber 1120. Cube Ranch equipped the Seamaster with a remote detonator that Piers Brosnan uses to blow up the boat of villain Elliot Carver. 1999, the world is not enough. Bond still wears the recognizable Omega Seamaster Professional 300 meter. After Cube Ranch fiddled around with the watch, it's now able to act as an ultra powerful light source and more importantly, a miniature grappling hook is hidden underneath the bezel that helps Bond to escape from a missile base, lifting him out of an avalanche. In the 2002 movie, Die Another Day, Pierce Brosnan again wears the Omega Seamaster Professional reference 2531.80. This time the watch is equipped with a laser that's built into the crown. Another useful trick is hidden in the helium escape valve. It can be pulled out of the watch and used as a remote detonator. The 21st Bond movie is often described as a reboot, both for the series and the character of James Bond. The idea was that the actor should be closer to the character from Ian Fleming's books. Bond became more edgy, more human and also showing more emotions. The actor in question was Daniel Craig. This change of character was more in line with the signs of the times and it also reflects in the watches that the new James Bond wears. More sporty, more rugged with the planet ocean while the Seamaster Aquaterra models add a touch of casual chic. And rumors say that the Seamaster 300 War Inspector was a personal choice of Bond actor Daniel Craig. Daniel Craig was very, very actively involved in the new Seamaster 300. And to understand why, we have to go again a little bit back in history. He is somebody who appreciates watches a lot. Uh, he actually collects watches, has a deep understanding of watches. He started uh, suggesting things already quite early on, after Casino Royale. And one of, the, um, one of the small things you will notice with the watches that Daniel Craig wears, starting with Quantum of Solace, is that um, the Planet Oceans he is wearing, or his character is wearing, are the small size, like the, the 42 millimeter uh, Planet Oceans. And this has to do with the fact that he wished for a slightly lighter watch and a slightly uh, smaller size. Daniel Craig's watches during his tenure as James Bond have tended to be more of a vintage feel, sort of smaller, kind of inherently elegant. And this to me is a sign of how he wanted to approach this Bond character and how the franchise has actually included Daniel Craig's version of Bond. In some ways, the five films that he's been in have not only just been a journey from start to finish of Daniel Craig as James Bond, but this Bond has been a sort of microcosm of the bigger journey of Bond throughout the history of the franchise. So having a vintage kind of feel to it, in some ways I think it's a really lovely parallel to what's happening with the choice of Daniel Craig and Bond and how he embodies this role because someone who's got this sort of essentialism to him where nothing feels fussy, it's always cutting edge and yet as perfect as it can be as a form. You really need a watch that expresses that without feeling like it's just relying on trend or you know what's happening out there in the design world right now. There needs to be kind of a pared down and essential. I keep using this word essential because he never feels like any decision he makes isn't completely instinctual and a vintage watch sort of says something about a person who's so secure in their decisions that it's barely a decision, it's just kind of there and it's always been there and you never question it. It's never kind of like an empty retro decision where he's like, oh, I feel like wearing something vaguely 60s today. It's really just about being a tried and true, instinctual, reflexive, perfect choice. Rolex. Amiga. Beautiful.
in the 2006 movie Casino Royale, we see the well-known Seamaster Professional, which has now been upgraded by Omega instead of Cube Ranch. The new Seamaster Professional is now equipped with a coaxial movement caliber 2500. Besides this upgraded version of the Seamaster Professional, another watch from the Seamaster collection makes its appearance on Bond's wrist. It's the brand new Seamaster Planet Ocean 600 meter coaxial that is also equipped with the Omega Scalabar 2500. While we would all expect Q-Brand to equip the watch with a few nifty gadgets, that didn't happen and the two certified chronometer wristwatches with their coaxial movements only indicated correct time. As of the 2008 movie Quantum of Solace, the Seamaster Professional has disappeared. Bond kept a more rugged and sporty Seamaster Planet Ocean. Instead of the 45.5mm version that Bond wore in the previous movie, he now changed to the slightly smaller 42mm version. The Omega in question is the Seamaster Planet Ocean 600m coaxial with a black dial and bezel. And again, no tricks added by Q-Branch. In Skyfall, Daniel Craig wears a Seamaster Planet Ocean and for more dressy occasions, he wears a Seamaster Aqua Terra. By now the Seamaster Planet Ocean comes with a ceramic bezel and a new coaxial movement, caliber 8500. And for the first time, we see Bond wearing a Seamaster Aqua Terra. The choice was for the 38.5mm version with a blue stripe dial and the same in-house movement, caliber 8500. In 2015, the movie Spectre featured again Daniel Craig as James Bond, and on the wrist are again different Omega watches. First, there's the new vintage inspired Seamaster 300, which is here, the Spectre Limited Edition with a very rare lollipop hand, and it's worn on a black and grey NATO strap. Inside, Tix Omega's anti magnetic master chronometer movement, caliber 8400. The other watch is the Omega Seamaster Aqua Terra with a blue dial now being the bigger version measuring 41.5mm in diameter. Q worked its magic again on James Bond's watch and after three movies without any Q branch gadgets, they are back. When Bond receives his watch from Q, he asks, Does it do anything? And Q says, It tells the time. Yet at a certain point in the movie, the watch actually does more than just indicating the correct time. It features a countdown and a bomb. Once activated, the index becomes the remaining time before the explosion by turning red. In No Time To Die, James is wearing a Seamaster Diver 300 meter. And to be precise, it's the new 007 edition. The watch is made from corrosion resistant light and tough titanium, sporting a brown tropical dial and aluminium bezel insert. Daniel Craig was said to have significant input in its design, mainly with regrets for it to be lightweight and slimmer. A Q has equipped the watch with a gadget as it includes the ability to emit a powerful electromagnetic pulse. Interestingly, this tweak on the Seamaster is somehow more realistic than some of the previous ones, as we all know that Omega's mechanical movements can withstand magnetism up to 15,000 Gauss. So a lot of the same choices that would have gone into all the details of his costume needed to be true to the essence of what makes James Bond James Bond. And that essence is definitely defined by this kind of instinctual knowledge of what works. And always being at the ready. I think the history of Omega in the James Bond franchise, where the watch has played a key role in special effects and specific stunt sequences. I think when we meet Bond in the beginning of our film, we might suspect that this kind of relaxed version of a, the picture of an idyllic life isn't going to last very long. So the fact that an Omega watch is kind of attached to him from the outset is a surefire way for him to be protected and ready should anything happen to interrupt this kind of paradise that he's in. And Sure enough, it does. So in addition to the sort of technical requirements um, and the kind of ability of the Omega watch to kind of tick the utilitarian box is the elegance of the choice. When we meet him, he's basically in a t-shirt and swim trunks, but he's still James Bond. He still makes incredibly instinctually elegant decisions. Nothing feels like he really needed to think, hmm, I'm gonna wear this watch today or that watch today. He just has a watch and it's perfect and you know, we don't need to think about it. It just happens to be the best watch in the world and so that is perfect for James Bond no matter what his situation is. 
No Time To Die is a very special Bond in many respects. It's Daniel Craig's last outing as James Bond and its unprecedented ending raises questions on the series' future. It also stands out for its strong female characters. In our Bond film, we actually have quite a few really strong female characters and each of them has a specific role in Bond's life, um, in his work and in his personal life. Nomi, who is the newest kind of best and brightest agent for MI6. The choice of her watch, the Seamaster Aquaterra, is incredibly parallel to even Bond's Seamaster Diver because she is the new best, brightest MI6 agent. So she needs to have almost the same kind of visual language in a way, even though it's very much her own. She's very different from Bond, but when I'm thinking about how the character fits into the arsenal of MI6 agents, you don't want to miss the kind of same essential details that define Bond, like this kind of instinctual understanding of what's perfect or what's right. There's a utility in the watch, there's an elegance in the watch, and these are two things that kind of combine perfectly um, into the choice of watch for Nomi. Um, she's very, very independent, and so when we see her, no matter what the situation is, whether it's a tactical situation or embodied in everyday life kind of situation, that watch kind of has to work in a myriad of ways. And so we selected one that felt like it was sort of, it could be as much of a chameleon as she was, but also remain incredibly essential.